So the Chicago Bulls have signed Alizé Johnson. And if you're not the biggest NBA follower, if you're not a diehard fan, you might be wondering, Alizé Johnson? Who are you talking about? And honestly, most times with a sign like this, I might debate even just skipping it. I drew a video on it because a lot of people don't even know who he is. He's not a big name, and he hasn't made that much of an impact in the NBA so far in his career. But with the Chicago Bulls, they have a pretty glaring need in terms of depth, and specifically depth at the forward position. That and it's been a pretty quiet couple days being in the offseason with the NFL season coming up. So it's about time I gave you all a video. But for the Bulls, like I said with their depth, that's the one problem with them. I've liked this Bulls season a lot. Not saying that it couldn't backfire on them or that it couldn't be a very disappointing season coming up. I think it could. I think this roster, we could get into it more as we go on. But I think it has a chance to be very disappointing, especially with the way people like me think that they have a pretty high ceiling. I think there's a good chance that they don't get there. But what they did this offseason, I think it clearly gave them a higher ceiling and you have to go for it. Because where the Bulls at were before, it's not like they were, you know, they were a solid playoff team year in and year out. No. No, before they made those moves, best case scenario, they get themselves into the playoffs for the first time in a while. And they weren't going anywhere. Now, is it a 100% chance they're in the playoffs? With the improved East, I'm not going to say 100%. I think they definitely should, but it's definitely not 100%. But what this gives them a chance to be competitive near the top of the East. I will also won't rule out say it's about as good of a chance that they get a top three seed as that they don't make the playoffs. I think there's a real chance that they get a top three seed. Maybe even a better chance than they miss the playoffs. Because they have high-level talent. And when you have that level of talent, you're going to have a shot. They brought in Lonzo, a guy that has all the way put it together in the NBA, you know, he has solid numbers. He's improved his three-point shot a lot. And at times, he looks like a great defender. But he has, has he been a dominant defender game in, game out? No. If that was the case, the Pelicans' defense probably wouldn't have been so atrocious when him and Drew Holiday were there. I don't think he's been a consistently great defender. But he has shown flashes of greatness. And he's generally a very good defender. And But other than that, he hasn't shown to be a winning player so far. He hasn't been able to show it on a winning team. But now he's given the opportunity. You've got Zach Levine, who is a pure bucket. Another guy that hasn't had the opportunity to show on a winning team. The people that criticize him for not winning. It's one of those situations where I always criticize someone for not winning. I'm all about winning. But at the same time, name the team that he's been on where they should have made the playoffs. That Bulls team last year, Bulls fans were talking about, we're making the playoffs after we got Vucevic. I never liked that trade. I thought y'all gave up way too much. I think Vucevic is overrated. But with the other moves you've made, it makes more sense. Because now you've got DeRozan, who... Probably a little overpaid, a little overpaid, but you overpay for all-star level players when you're trying to go over the top. And I think it's a team where he fits with when you, with when you have a guy in Lonzo who's a great spot-up shooter. You've got Zach Levine, who's a great shooter. And now you have DeRozan, who can fill in that in-between game. Now at the forward position, the four, the problem is, and this is kind of where we're getting to this video, is they lost Thaddeus Young. Thaddeus Young, who... By all accounts, he was like their best locker room guy. I think Zach Levine was good friends with him. He's been around a long time in the NBA. He's just a solid player, solid rebounder, good shooting touch. I remember there's one uh, statistic that they put up during a game. It was like, only players ever with like 11.6 points a game, 5.8 rebounds, and 3.2 assists, something crazy like that. And it was just like him, Larry Bird, and like LeBron James. So, you know, if you get really specific with the numbers, he's a very solid all-around player, and they lost him. So now you have a, a weakness at the forward position that Patrick Williams is going to have to step into and try and be like a stretch forward, which he's probably capable of. But behind him, Troy Brown is kind of a three, so there's not much to speak about. And that's where we get to Alizé Johnson. People are probably saying, get to Alizé! Sorry, Alizé himself isn't particularly interesting. I think it's the Bulls roster situation that makes this video worth saying, worth talking about. So Alizé, Alizé Johnson, now, what is he giving you? Bulls fans that are looking to know about Alizé Johnson. He's not giving you shooting. He's not giving you much size. He's six foot seven, but what he is giving you is the opportunity to play to go into that transition style that the Bulls have potential to do. With Zach Levine being a high flyer that doesn't use it that much in games, but maybe with Lonzo who looks at their lobs, you'll see a little bit more of that. He's a full runner. Zach Levine can be very athletic. Lonzo Ball, of course, always loves to push the pace. Throws it not as much lately. And then you've got Patrick Williams, a young guy. So Alizé Johnson, when he's in there, he can help you push the pace, watch his highlights. He grabs a rebound, and he's looking to bring the ball to the floor. I haven't watched enough full games to say whether, you know, maybe he does that a little bit too much at times, you know, when you should give it to a guard. It doesn't look super smooth, but you can definitely see times where he does it well, you know, just dribbles the ball to the floor, but kind of like a point, point forward and works very hard in the glass. So I think what you have right there is a guy that helps, you know, get a little bit more play playmaking in the front court, which you already have. 
and go into a play a uh, fast paced style. But the problem, not the problem with the Bulls, but a challenge for the coach is what is your play style? Because DeRozan to me is a very slow it down type of guy. Vucevic absolutely a very slow it down guy. And then Lonzo to me is a guy that wants to push the pace. So it'll be interesting to see and Kobe White as well. So it's it'll be interesting to see how they balance those things. But now at least you have more options at the front court. I think. You know, you still could use like one more strong forward off the bench. I think they they still need to show up that bench even more. But I think this is a move that helps them. I think this is a move that they need to make. And I like what the Bulls have this season. It has a pretty not a low ceiling, but there's a lot of ways this season could go. I feel good about it. I like their offseason a lot. Let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like, and then subscribe, please. Yes, yeah, sir.